Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the UK. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in NHS as a specialist biomedical scientist. And for many years, I've helped a number of people secure their dream job as a specialist biomedical scientist and also as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you to navigate through interview questions and thereby increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. I ask that you like, share, comment and subscribe our page. Thank you. Hello guys. So um like I said I'm going to make few videos so I've already done one so this is the second one I'm doing today. Right. Today I would like to talk to you about emergency. So in blood in blood transfusion there's always question for emergency. Okay? So what are you going to do in a case of emergency? So it can come in different forms. I'm going to tell you all the forms or all the types that you're going to see in a case of emergency. So I'm going to be painting scenarios for you. Please, if you've, if you've not watched my previous videos on in blood bank or in blood transfusion, please go and watch them because that is where I'm building these information from. Now, in a case of emergency, there are different scenarios you can see. Number one, so remember that emergency, when it has to do with blood bank coming into play or blood transfusion coming into play, that means someone is possibly bleeding. That means they need blood. So it has to be we issuing blood to, to patient. So for us to issue blood to patient, we had already talked about historic blood group, current blood group, or antibodies or no antibodies. So these are the things I'm going to try to put together. So if you go for interview, and they ask you in a case of emergency which blood are you going to issue or sometimes they may ask you someone is bleeding from a and e and they call you requesting for blood what are you going to do or they may ask you that someone is bleeding from um, maternity ward or delivery suit what are you, which any form it comes emergency has to do that you have to issue blood okay now before I go into detail, I want to start off by telling you that in a case of emergency, there are things you need to understand, which, which we call major hemorrhage protocol, okay? Now, I'm going to explain major hemorrhage protocol, then I can say the main thing I really want to say. So, if someone is bleeding, or maybe there's any problem in the world, and they think that this person may bleed to death, or they think that this person definitely needs blood, they are going to activate what we call major hemorrhage. So when they activate the major hemorrhage, you as a biomedical scientist, you have a blip, okay, with you. So that blip will alarm. You might hear something like pee, 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 as the case may be. Nobody wants to hear that sound, but when you do hear the sound, it means there is emergency, okay? So what you then need to do is to call that number, okay? Because the blip will come with extension number, you call them. So it may make that sound that need to say something like major hemorrhage, major hemorrhage activated, maybe from so 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 ward as the case may be. Then you call them and ask for the patient detail, okay? So now let me tell you, when they give you the patient details, it can happen in these forms or in these three different types, I'm going to mention it to you. Therefore, if you go for any interview and they ask you a question, in a case of emergency, what are you going to do? Paint these scenarios that I will be painting to you. Paint it for them. Tell them the same stories. Except if they are specific. If they are not specific, if they make it open question, give them the stories as I'm going to be giving it to you. So there are a few scenarios I'm going to be mentioning you know, to you. Number one, does the patient have a current group? Remember, for a patient to have a current group means the patient have historic group so does the patient have a current group is the antibody screening negative if the antibody screening or antibody no antibody history if the antibody screening is negative and no antibody history that is very easy so the patient has a current group the current antibody screening is negative no antibody history that is easy number two the patient you know the patient is a known patient so you you have a historic group but you don't have a current group but no antibody, okay, in the past. That's also a different story. The third story is where you know the patient, so the system already know the patient, but this patient has history of antibody, but has a current group, 
Okay, that's also another thing. The last one is when you don't even know the patient at all. So what are you going to do? Now I'm going to take it one after the other. So in a case of emergency and they require blood, they've activated the major hemorrhage. The first thing you do is to ask them the patient detail. When you call them, you ask the patient detail, you check the patient detail. If the patient has current group, the current antibody screening is negative, no history of antibody, easy, easy. You just do electronic issue. You give the group specific of that patient. Now, but before I continue, can I tell you that when a major hemorrhage is activated, there's what we call PAC-1, PAC-2. So PAC-1 has to do with 4 units of red blood cells and 4 units of FFP. But when it comes to PAC-2, the difference between PAC-1 and PAC-2 is the addition of 1 unit of platelet. Anyway, so once they activate a major hemorrhage, there's a current group, the current antibody screening is negative, okay? No history of antibody electronic issue. So what you do is that you give group specific. So this person, if the person is A positive, you give A positive. Because, even if it is emergency. But because you have a current group and the current antibody screening is negative and the person does not have a, any history of antibody, you give group specific. Okay? To that patient. So that would be electronic issue. You electronically issue the unit. That one is very easy. It's not a problem. You don't need to do much apart from issuing the unit. Number two type of scenario is whereby you don't have a current group but you have a historic group and because you don't have a current group and they say they need blood now, no antibody history but no current group. The only thing you have is historic blood group. So what are you going to do? You need to negotiate with the department. So what are you going to do? You phone them and you say, oh, this patient does not have a current group. Please, would you mind to send me a sample for current group, okay, and an antibody screening, and if you guys can wait for me to process that, then I can issue the unit to the patient. In some cases, they will say that is fine, they can wait. Then they send you the sample, you run the sample, hopefully the antibody screen will be negative, you now have a current group, then you can give electronically. You can then do electronic issue. Again, that one in most cases is not a problem. The one that becomes a problem is when you call them and say, this patient has a, a historic group, but no current group, please can you send me a sample and they say they cannot send you sample that they don't have time to to send that sample that they need the blood now is a clinical decision that they need the blood now let me tell you what they are doing it means they are asking you as a biomedical scientist to issue on cross match units and because they are doing that you tell them that in that situation they are asking you to issue on cross match unit therefore you would want them to sign a concessional release form okay so you ask them that can they sign a concessional authorize you to sign a concessional release form once they authorize you take the patient take the the doctors or the nurses whoever that activated the major just take the detail okay and once they sign the concessional release form in most cases though if it is major hemorrhage you may not necessarily need to sign the concessional release form but to be on the safer side you sign the concessional release form and once you sign it then you can issue all negative blood if it is a woman within bearing of age but if it is a man or a woman above bearing of age you don't need to worry you can even issue O positive where possible but if it is a woman within bearing of age you need to issue O negative and you need to make sure it is k-neg in fact in a case of emergency we in some cases we prefer the blood to be c deck neg c deck neg mean c d e k negative c deck neg antigens so we want the blood to be o negative that is c deck neck c negative d negative big e negative and bk negative anyway so that's what happened when the patient does not have a current group and they need the blood immediately so they need to authorize you to sign a concessional release form okay so that can then allow you to do that another thing that can happen then is that maybe you already know this patient but this patient has a historic antibody maybe there's a current group but they still want you to issue blood immediately you say oh this patient has a antibody i will need to do a cross match and they say okay they can wait for cross match then you can do cross match and provide 
uh, compatible unit to them. But in some cases, they may not be able to wait for that cross match. Remember, this patient has a historic antibody and you definitely need to do cross match okay but they said they cannot wait that is a clinical decision that they want to issue the you they want to transfer the patient immediately then what you then need to do is to let the hematology consultant who is on call to be aware of that situation in fact you also need to let the world know to call the hematology consultant who is on call to also be aware of the situation and hopefully in most cases they will authorize it because it's a clinical decision that they definitely need to transfuse the patient at that time so these are the different scenarios that you might need to you know let them know in a case of emergency okay so in a case of emergency there are situations whereby you just have to give blood no problem electronic issue there are situations whereby you need to you know understand that they need to authorize you to sign a concessional release form and also there are some cases where you need to let the hematology consultant know please these are the things that i've explained to you in a case of emergency what you are going to do there's another thing i want to add especially in most cases where they say they cannot be able to provide you blood that they just they cannot be able to provide you the patient sample that they just want the blood immediately always plead them ask them that where possible can they please take the patient sample and send to the blood transfusing the patient the reason why you are doing that you don't want the donor cell to meet with the patient cell before they collect the sample because if they collect the sample remember what i told you about the factors that can affect blood group and antibody screening so what of those factors are blood transfusion especially in blood group in anywhere so that will affect it you might get something like drug population so because you don't want that discrepancy that's why you ask them please can you take sample i will issue the unit but please take the sample before transfusing the patient so that's why you do that so in a case of emergency where there's no any current group and you need the current group and they say they cannot be able to send you the sample immediately then issue the unit where possible like i've told you but also ask them to collect the sample and send to the lab before transfusing the patient where possible in some cases it may not be possible anyway so here you go these are the questions so when they ask you questions in a case of emergency what are you going to do the question you need to now ask yourself in issuing blood does the person has a current group that's a different story i've told you okay if the patient has a current group what is the antibody status like does it have any antibody history is it positive or is it negative so that would determine what you're going to do okay now or does the patient you don't even know the patient at all and of course if you don't know the patient at all that means you need to give all negative or O positive where possible remember O negative is mostly for women within bearing of age O positive or O negative doesn't matter can go for anybody so these are the things you need to consider but another thing i would really want you to pay attention that i had already said was if that patient has any history of antibody very vital let the hematology consultant know about it so i've told you what to do in a case of emergency so find out each of these scenarios and give them the stories. So if they ask you a question and say, which blood will you give in a case of emergency? Or if they ask you a question saying, you receive a call from A and E to, that someone is bleeding, what are you going to do? What you're going to do is all these stories that I've given to you, step by step. If you have the time during your interview, give them the story, tell them, well, it depends on the situation or it depends on the scenarios. Paint each of these scenarios and each of those scenarios you're going to paint, there are key words, there are key aspects that is important. Where concessional release form will need to be signed, need to, where you need to tell the hematology consultant. Anyway, thank you very much, here you go. In a case of emergency, this is what you do. Bye.